and uh, management tools. So remember earlier when I said working you know, 40 hours a week, working efficiently, working effectively, do you have systems and processes in place to, to do the things you need to do? And for example, you know, and we're going to do an exercise today on root cause analysis and action plan. I always talk about, you know, um, managers, about their fact that they have more stuff on their desk that they need to solve, more problems that they need to solve, and, and that they really have time to do. And when you ask them about those problems and what they are, and half of them are not even theirs. You know, they're good problem solvers, so people in the organization bring some to them instead of having your, your people be self-empowered to do that. It happens all the time. So what you do is you have to teach these people how to problem solve. You know, you, you know it's, 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 there is processes how to do that. So today we'll, we'll touch on uh, root cause analysis. There is a process how you do root cause analysis. So you can get down to solving the real issue and not necessarily solving symptoms of the problem that you're dealing with. And, uh, and likewise with goal setting, we call target planning goal setting. You know, what's your 30-day goal? What's your weekly goal? What's your six-month goal? Write it down, check it off. You have people that report to you, do they have goals? They should, every week, every month. They should have targets that they need to hit. Otherwise, how do you evaluate their, their performance, right? How do you know how they're doing? You know, you go out into a manufacturing shop and you got six welders. One is welding five pieces a day, the other one is eight, the other one is three, the other one is four. Well, I mean, unless you have a target that they all need to be doing seven or six, how do you tell this guy that he's not doing a good job? He may think he's doing a good job. So you have to have all this, this all this stuff, measuring metrics. Because leniency in organizations or lack of discipline in organization really comes from an absolute lack of metrics and way to benchmark performance against. Think about it. If you don't have the benchmark, how can you tell somebody they're doing good or not? If you're in business development and you're not bringing in work, but you're making phone calls, you know, maybe some, how many are you making? Are you making two a day? 20 a week? Three a week? How are you gonna, you know, how, you know, how, many, how many projects are you bidding, right? How many projects do you need to build to win one project? Do you know that? 10, probably, you got a 10% ratio? 10, 12% ratio? So if you bid 70 and you only won three, you, you gotta go back and figure out why, right? Because that's not within where your, you know, where your benchmark is. So there's benchmark, you need to benchmark for everything. And PIPs, that stands for Performance Improvement Plan. It's a PIP, performance improvement plan. You know, if somebody's not doing a good job and they're not hitting their, their mark or their, their numbers, well, there are ways to go about putting them on notice and there's a process to get them through to see if they can you know, start hitting those numbers. And if they don't, or they don't perform, then legally, and if you have the human resources working with you, they can tell you that it's okay to let it go and avoid uh, you know, wrongful dismissals. So performance improvement. There's, there's um, this way, to, what just reminded me of, of uh, uh, going back to Jack Welch talking last month about the, what he called the 2070 10 rule. He said, you reward the hell of the top 20%. I mean, you just reward. I mean, those guys, they're, they're, they're making it. They're just kicking. They're, you know, kicking it for the company. The next 70%, then you look and see where they are. And you start, you know, addressing why they're not moving up to the 20, and, and you hopefully you put some plans in place, and you cut the 10%, the bottom 10% off every year. Maybe you've heard about that or not. Some people think that's mean, but they said that's just the way it is. It's just the way it works. You know, they said the other way, you know, they said there, there's also four, when he's looking at evaluating that 70%, you, you have people that, that get the values and hit the numbers. Those are your top performers. There's people that get the values and are not hitting the numbers. So to figure out how to get them to hit the numbers. There, there's good people, right? There's the people that 
don't have the values, and don't hit the numbers. They're out. He said, the real key, and gets a little tricky, is those guys, and there are like 600 people there, says, that don't have the values, but hit the numbers. And I think you can hear the rumor kind of smile laughing in the organization, because he said, you all got it. And I, I know what I have. And oh yeah, oh yeah, I know that guy's a pain. Man, he just creates so much havoc here. Nobody likes him, but man, he, he just makes it happen. He's bringing in the work. He, you know, he, he doesn't do anything, you know, he just, but he's bringing in the work or he's hitting the numbers. And according to Jack, you got to cut it and move on. Sooner or later, you will be doing it anyway. Might as well do it soon. Interesting. Interesting concept. You know, he's got, he has a book out there called Winning. He's got all this stuff. The guy's, you know, the guy's just phenomenal. You know, he ran GE for like 30, 40 years.